Hello everyone, I wish you are safe and healthy. Every day I do wish this because uh, due to this pandemic situation what we suffer these days. So um, today I'm going to discuss about a new design pattern. So far we discuss about the creational uh, category of the design pattern from the uh, famous book design pattern from G Gang of Four. And today I'm going to de uh, leave this creational design pattern and I'm going to approach a new one. So from creational, we are going to move into behavioral design patterns. So I'm going to start with the chain of responsibility and going to move on, right? So if you're not subscribed yet, you need to subscribe. You must subscribe because you shouldn't miss any of these videos. And also make sure you click on the bell icon and also go to my fa uh, Facebook page, which I put the link be uh, below. And you must, uh, I mean, it's not must, you should like that. So then uh, that way we can stay in touch and you can send your questions. Okay. So a uh, chain of responsibility is the design pattern we can use most, but a lot of people don't use because of they don't know about that. For example, let's say, um, I'll take multiple examples. One, you have to control menu based on the uh, user level. So let's say you have a, a CEO and director and a manager and executive, right? So uh, they have a multiple levels of permission. So uh, lowest is executive, then the manager, then the director, then the CEO. So if you want to implement something based on this permission, you can uh, easily use a chain of responsibility. Right. In the Java API, logger is the best example we can see this uh, chain of responsibility pattern implemented uh, in practical, right? For example, if you take the uh, log levels, you have a, a debug warning and um, uh, severe, critical, and depend on the logo implementation is different. That's that's usually hierarchy, right? If you set a uh, log level into info, it won't print anything below the info, but it will print everything above the info, right? So if you set log level to the warning, it will not print the info even, and it will print everything above the warning, right? So like that. So let's go back uh, to the coding and see one example here. I just simply I just create this. And you can see here, I get the logger, right? And I set the level is info, right? So you can see here, I print info, warning, fine, and the severe, right? So if I run this now, it will not print a fine one, but it will, it will print other two, right? So you can see it print info, warn, and a severe. If I change this to warn, right? So you will see info even will not print, right? So you can see here, it doesn't print the uh, info, right? So that means it go in the hierarchical level. And the nice thing is, if you don't find a handler for the particular level, it, it just ignore that, right? So why we need this chain of responsible design pattern? What's the purpose of this? So mainly, this is encouraged loosely coupled. For example, in a sender, do not know who the receiver is and the receiver do not know who the sender is, right? So receiver can perform their job without knowing who send the message, right? And also sender can perform their job without knowing, without knowing the knowledge of who going to receive the results, right? So that means if we can decouple sender and receiver through this design pattern. So if you take a UML the diagram for this one, so you can see here you have a sender and then uh, we have a handler, right? So everyone or every receiver is implemented from the handler, right? So then a yeah, handler knows its successor, right? So you can see here a sender uh, give the uh, request to handle into the first receiver and the receiver handle it into the second receiver and the third receiver and so on and so forth, right? So the beauty of this uh, during the program, like let's say uh, we, we implement and we deploy, we need to change this order, right? So you can just change this wiring, you can change this order of the receivers and the senders, but without touching the core implementation of the program. So that's the beauty of this design pattern. Okay, so let's do some of our own uh, one here. So uh, since this is like quite a large implementation and we need some uh, same type of classes, I implemented few, right? But I'm going to show you from the scratch how we can make it, right? So here, so here you can see we have a, a public abstract class 
handler right so as per our uml diagram so we have to have a handler right so here this one handler should know about its successor so i'm going to create a handler object called successor and i'm going to create this as a protected variable right so now i want to set the successor so i'm going to create a setter for this okay and so now i'm going to implement uh, this is my use case right so i have an invoice and invoice are subject to taxes right but this scenario you have multiple taxes uh, depend on the uh, total of the invoice right if the invoice total is hundred dollars then you have a VAT less than hundred dollars is we have a VAT if you have a two hundred dollars you have a, a VAT plus NBT and if it is a, a three hundred dollars you have a, I mean a between two hundred and three hundred if it, you have a VAT NBT and a BTT and if it has a four hundred dollars and above you have a something called social security fund SSF tax right so I mean uh, uh, this is just a hypothetical scenario right so to make this calculation easy VAT would be uh, one percent and NBT would be two percent and uh, BTT would be three percent and uh, SSF would be four percent right of the total so and this uh, tax is just only be depend on the total of the invoice but not the accumulated tax that means once you calculate the VAT the NBT also and the BTT and the SSF will calculate only on the total of the invoice but not along with the previous taxes okay. So, so therefore I am going to create a method here if you want you can uh, use an interface also for uh, here but I am not going to use an interface but I am just going to uh, go only with the abstract class. So what I am going to do is I am going to create a method here public abstract double apply tax I am going to take the invoice here right ok. So if you go to the invoice you can see that just a, a class where you have invoice number amount and the tax right so you have a, a set tax method and you have a constructor with the constructor you can create the uh, pass this thing but you don't ca you cannot pass the tax because tax is something we are going to calculate right so it, you cannot pass the tax uh, so you don't need this line right so you cannot pass the uh, tax here uh, to the constructor and you have a uh, three getters so you can see here we don't have any other uh, setters okay so go back to this and now you have this one okay so now we need to implement a tax based on the handler right so I'm going to create the VAT here okay so this one will extends handler right so since it's an abstract class so it's asking to uh, implement the apply tax method so now you have this one so what I'm going to do is invoice dot set tax is invoice dot get tax multiplied by 0 0.01 right so that means 1 percent right so this is my uh, tax implementation and this is very important if invoice dot get amount less than or equal 100 right so there is our logic if less than or equal 100 it will implement the VAT right then what we are going to do here we do not want to move forward because other tax are not eligible if the on invoice is only less than 100 right so NBT is applicable only if the invoice is above the 100 so therefore I am going to return from here invoice dot get tax ok so else that mean this invoice is subject to next tax so what I'm going to do here so I'm going to tell successor dot apply tax and I'm going to pass the invoice right so this is the way our real chain happen so you must understand this very carefully right so what I'm doing here I'm just setting uh, calculate the tax right but in the real example you need to put the if condition and um, other if condition and those things right I am just implementing this here as this example right 
and then what I'm going to do if the invoice amount is less than or equal to 100 I don't need to calculate any other taxes right so that I'm going to return from this okay if not I need to calculate uh, other taxes so I'm going to pass to the successor right so that's why I say it's a chain of responsibility I have a successor right but I don't know who that is right so that's what very important I don't know who that who, who the next one and that successor has other successor but I don't know who that is right so now let me to implement uh, those classes as well and I'll uh, because you I don't want you to like see what I'm typing here okay so I did implement all the classes right and uh, but it's, it's the same thing for example if you go to uh, NBT so you can see it's the same thing I did right and I just put the message here NBT calculators let me to put this message to uh, here as well right saying that calculate I'm adding this just to show you how this works Right, so for the NBT, I'm doing the same thing, right? In the uh, calculate two percent, and if the value is less than two hundred, then I'm returning from there because I don't want to calculate any other taxes. And then if not, I'm going to the next level, right? And then you have a BTT. If the value is uh, less than three hundred, I don't want to calculate any other taxes, so I'm returning. Otherwise, I'm going to move forward. And finally, SSF, I don't have anyone to go next. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just calculating 4% uh, and then uh, I just return from here. Okay. So now I'm good. So now what I need to do is I need to uh, invoke these values, right? So let's in create multiple invoices and see how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an uh, object from the VAT equal new VAT going to create an object from all other taxes okay so I'm going to do little trick here this is not required to this design pattern right because you really need to keep this name out of your uh, your real logic right because this name can change so what can change in the near future for something else so, so I have created separate class called tax right this doesn't have any logic implemented but this is like I'm using this as a beginning of the chain right so I'm just using a blank one called tax and I just pass into the successor okay so now here here what I did is I created object from uh, each tax and then I'm going to set the chain right so this is where I'm really setting the chain so what I'm going to start with the tax so I'm going to create a tax object as well okay so my lowest level is tax right so tax dot successor is vat right and the vat dot successor is NBT right so likewise I'm going to set all so now I have set up my chain right so start from the tax then we calculate the VAT then we calculate the NBT then BTT then SSF right in this example this doesn't much uh, do any differences because the tax is not accumulated right so whatever you calculate first doesn't affect on the next formula but let's do this way so now I'm going to create an invoice equal new invoice right so my invoice number is 1 and the value is 50 right so I think it's okay so now I'm going to print whatever the tax value calculated for this apply tax and I'm going to pass the invoice right so now I need to do uh, I, I'm going to create a few more invoices here okay so I created a few more invoices first one is a 50 then 150 250 350 450 and 550 right we don't have to create that much in invoices but I just did it right okay so um, let's run this program and see what happened because now it calculated oops uh, that calculated as a zero that's little weird let's go back because probably we may made some mistake um, yeah so it should be not the get tax and get amount okay so so ideally they should be like this 
invoice dot get tax plus then invoice dot get amount and like this right so that's why I think I implemented the rest of the things let's check those yes that's how I implemented the rest of the things somehow I made a mistake in the first one okay so let's execute this again and uh, see uh, what happened okay so now you can see the first one is uh, 0 0.5 and then uh, next one is a 4.5 uh, then 15 and then uh, so and so forth right so i create the excel sheet to make sure our results are correct so the values are uh, 0 0.5 4.5 15 0 0.5 4.5 15 and 35 45 55 35 45 55 right so that means uh, it first calculate the vat and then it calculate the uh, nbt and then btt and then ssf and add all together and return right so this is chain of responsibility so now if you want to change this right for example somehow we decide we don't want to calculate the uh, vat right so we just calculate the nbt right and then what you just need to do is from the tax you just set the uh, successor to nbt right so that's all right that's all you need so now this bad calculation will not work right so let's let's try so now ideally this bad should not calculate yeah so you can see bad not calculated right and uh, and obviously this uh, defeat our logic because if the invoice amount is um, less than 100 it should not calculate the uh, nbt and and then because we didn't put the, the that much validation that's why it happened but i wanted to sh uh, show you so this is how the chain we can modify right so like for example again we just say okay i don't need anything but we only calculate uh, SSF tax right so let's run this so now none of the text will calculate other than the SSF right so you can see only SSF calculated right so that's why without change in the implementation the real implementation of the logic you can just manipulate from uh, how your chain should work right so that is the beauty of the uh, chain of responsibility pattern so one disadvantage is also that because uh, the end user and developer can manipulate the chain right so if you really want to uh, hide that you can put this also into the back implementation right. and this is the like to get the, all the features this is how it should work right so then um, that's one other design pattern uh, subscribe to my channel and a like and a comment and uh, like to my facebook page and stay in touch make sure you share this video and i'll come with the other video. Till that, stay safe. Take care.